Extra dimensions. Now, as impossible as they may seem, their existence would revolutionize the world of physics. Albert Einstein created his theory of general relativity with four dimensions in mind, three of space and one of time. This is how we perceive our world. We can go forward and backwards, side to side, and up and down. We can also move through the one dimension of time. At the time his theory was published, there were only two forces known, gravity and electromagnetism. Einstein's theory explained and accounted for gravity and its behavior in our universe. However, electromagnetism was governed by a completely different set of laws. Similar to our current attempts to find a unification theory, Theodore Kaluza wanted to merge the theories of electromagnetism and gravity. He did this by adding an additional dimension in his mathematical equations. We'd have our three dimensions of space, which governed gravity, another dimension for time, and then a fifth dimension that governed electromagnetism. Now the reason we could never see this fifth dimension is because it worked at a microscopic level. Now if we were to throw a baseball through space, we would see it interacting with the three spatial dimensions. But we wouldn't see it interacting with this fifth dimension because that would be at the level of the electromagnetic charge force. But if we were to microscopically look at a proton versus an electron flying through space. They might fly the same in the three spatial dimensions, but they would move completely differently in this fifth dimension because they have a different charge. One way of imagining an extra dimension is to think about a telephone wire. To us, we see it as a line, one-dimensional. But to an ant, it can walk in the one dimension across or around the spiral patterns within the telephone wire. The ant, at its smaller level, perceives an extra dimension that we, unless we're looking closely at it, cannot see. Five years later, in 1926, Oscar Klein added a quantum interpretation to Kaluza's five-dimensional theory. Because of Heisenberg and Schrodinger's recent discoveries in quantum physics, Klein needed to update Kaluza's theory in order for it to still be applicable. Oscar Klein also found two discrepancies within Kaluza's original theory. The first problem Klein found in Kaluza's original theory was where his fifth dimension would be stored in the scheme of the universe. Klein connected a mathematical idea to this physics problem. The calibi yau fold is a mathematical theoretical principle in which multiple dimensions can be laid atop one another and folded. This fold would prevent any of the dimensions from ripping, which would ensure supersymmetry in the physics realm. The second problem was found deeply embedded into the mathematics of Kaluza's original equation, that the y-coordinates were sometimes topological. This meant that they would occasionally appear, but also disappear, but in a matter that could not be predicted. One way to imagine this is a blank space. Suddenly, within that blank space, a dot appears and grows into a sphere, then shrinks back down to the dot and disappears again. This sphere is the y-coordinate. It can appear and disappear within seconds for no apparent reason. The way Klein went about solving this was through complex mathematics. But what he meant to mean by it was that this y-coordinate could be a way that the extra dimensions were expressed through our three-dimensional minds and perception of the universe. With Klein's adjustments, a new theory was published called Kaluza-Klein theory. Although this new theory had Einstein's support, it never grew to the fame that his general relativity theory had, and Kaluza-Klein theory was later disproven. Nonetheless, Kaluza-Klein theory was a pivotal stepping stone in the physics world. It introduced the idea of extra dimensions, and its mathematics are what started up string theory. By studying these past theories, we can improve and better understand our modern ideas of how our universe works.